the bishops have gathered in Leeds for our plenary, our autumn plenary assembly, which is part of our usual pattern of meetings. We have two gatherings each year in spring and in autumn. But this was important because this was the first time in two years that the bishops have been able to gather together. And it was not only an opportunity to transact business, but more importantly, for a time for them to be together, to share their experiences over the last two years, and to pray. Each day at the bishops' plenary meeting begins with a period of adoration in front of the Blessed Sacrament, followed by the celebration of Mass. And particularly in the November meeting, we always have one Mass, which is to pray for those bishops who have died over the past year. But obviously, with the two years and the pandemic, we actually prayed for the repose of the soul of seven bishops this year, all of whom were retired, but um, all of whom were fondly remembered in our prayer and uh, commended to Almighty God. So as I said, this was a, a very important meeting because it was to gather together to reflect, to bring to the Lord the concerns of our hearts. And standing before uh, the Lord, you know, there was a, a, a deep reflection on the pandemic and the effect that it's had over the last two years on everybody's lives. There was an immense sense of thanksgiving for the ways in which Catholics across the country, both as individual parishioners, as parishes, as dioceses, uh, Catholic charities, responded to those needs that emerged very rapidly as the pandemic progressed since March 2020, when we began the first lockdown. There was a, a sense of sorrow for those who had died because of the infection with COVID, and those were mourning their loss, especially again in that first period when there was not a chance to celebrate funerals in the same way as we would normally do so. No one's been untouched by the pandemic, whether it's loss of family members or friends. And so it was really important that that would form part of our prayer as well. And we also, um, you may know that uh, on the 7th of November, each bishop uh, in his diocese offered a mass for the repose of the souls of those who have died. Uh, but also to thank frontline workers, whoever they may be, healthcare workers, social care workers, and ancillary workers. So many people gave of themselves for the good of our society, and that was, that was noted too. And there was a, a deep reflection on how we can be more effective in our mission, which ties in with uh, the discussions that we had around the synod and the synodal pathway that the Holy Father has asked us to engage in. And those early reflections that the bishops spoke about were very much about the concern that people have for the mission of the church. How do they live out the practice of their faith in a world which is very fast changing, which is drawing so much from people's personal experience? And one of the things that came out in that reflection was the longing for the Lord, that the pandemic had brought about a sort of starvation from the sacraments that people were responding to in a very positive way now. A homesickness is the phrase that you'll hear in a moment from the church and from the sacraments. But what also came very clearly through the discussions about the, uh, the synodal process, which we admit are very, in the, in the, they're very nascent, you know, the, the diocese are getting on with the work, was a real understanding of the Holy Father's desire for us to dream to think about the effective mission of the church in the modern world, to speak with confidence. The Holy Father uses the word parasia, candor, confidence. But more importantly, for everybody to listen to each other, bishops to people, people to people, bishops to bishops, because that listening with an open heart is at the heart of what the Holy Father has called the synodal conversion, letting the Holy Spirit guide the church to see where we are going in this world of ours that is so rapidly changing. So coming back to how we are to be a church, the bishops have crafted a statement which they've called Honouring Sunday, which uh, reflects on where we are in terms of the pandemic. And this is the third in a series of statements. The bishops issued a statement called the Day of the Lord. Then there was one called Sunday, it is our day. So this is a third statement about the importance of our faith in today's world. And what I'd like to do now is, is to read that statement. But I'll just read it so that you get a sense of what the bishops were talking about when they were looking at the pandemic, looking at the mission of the church and how we move forward. 
Honouring Sunday, as the synodal pathway of listening and discerning unfolds, we, the bishops of England and Wales, are paying particular attention to the hopes and fears, the joys and anxieties of all who are sharing their thoughts and feelings with us. We are attentive to the experience of the last year or so, when we have lived our faith through the limitations of the pandemic. We have heard of the longing which some express as a homesickness. We want to be in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. We yearn to celebrate the sacraments together, especially the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We desire to be nourished by our Lord in Holy Communion. The live streaming of the Mass and the remarkable response of our Catholic communities to those in need have provided comfort, sustenance and resilience. The Eucharist is the source and summit of our spiritual and pastoral life. Many people have said to us that they have appreciated the noble simplicity of the Mass at this time, which has allowed the mystery and majesty of our Lord's sacrificial love to shine through. The central appeal of the Mass, its beauty and its transcendence, raises our minds and hearts to God in an unambiguous and compelling manner. Our Lord Jesus Christ invites us to receive anew the gift of Sunday as the preeminent day, the day of resurrection, when the Church gathers to celebrate the Eucharist. Here we stand together before our Heavenly Father, offering our thanksgiving and prayer, through our Saviour, in the Holy Spirit. Here we receive Christ in his word. Here we are nourished by Christ in his precious body and blood. This is our primary joy, for which there is no substitute, and from which we draw our strength. The Sunday Eucharist is a gift. As God's holy people, we are called to praise and thank God in the most sublime way possible. When the Church speaks of the Sunday obligation, it reminds us that attending Mass is a personal response to the selfless offering of Christ's love. At this time, we recognise that for some people there may be certain factors which hinder attendance at Sunday Mass. The pandemic is clearly not over. The risk of infection is still present. For some, there is legitimate fear in gathering together. As your bishops, we recognise that these prevailing circumstances suggest that not everyone is yet in the position to fulfil the absolute duty to attend freely Sunday Mass. We now encourage all Catholics to look again at the patterns which they have formed in recent months with regard to going to Mass on Sundays. This would include consideration and reflection about what we might do on Sundays, such as sports or shopping or other leisure and social activities. This review, and the decisions which arise from it, fall to every Catholic, and we trust this will be done with honesty, motivated by a real love for the Lord whom we encounter in the Mass. The Sunday Mass is the very heartbeat of the Church and of our personal life of faith. We gather on the first day of the week and devote ourselves to the Apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. The Eucharist sustains us and spurs us on, renewing our gratitude and our hope. When we say Amen to Christ in receiving his body and blood, we express the love of God which is deep within us. And at the end of Mass, when we are sent forth, we express our love for our neighbour, especially those in need. These two dimensions reveal the full meaning of our faith. We are gathered together and sent out. We pray and are fed. We worship and we adore. These are intrinsic to our lives as those baptised into Christ. That statement was approved unanimously by all of the bishops at our plenary meeting and it's commended to all of the faithful here in England and Wales to undertake that positive reflection on the love of God, of the sacrifice of Christ in the Mass, the sacrificial love that is offered to each one of us and how we make our response to it. So that concludes the general material that we want to talk about in terms of the pandemic and in terms of the Synod. But some other things that actually occurred during the week, the bishops have approved a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage of the relics of Saint Bernadette, 
Many people in this country have a deep love for the Shrine of Our Lady at Lourdes and the role that St. Bernadette has in that. And so next year there will be a pilgrimage akin to that which occurred some years ago of the relics of St. Therese of Lisieux, coming around each of our dioceses so that we are able to pray. Pray with Bernadette, through Our Lady, to our Lord. There's also an agreement that the uh, national programme that we've had, which began some years ago to honour the anniversary of the death of St. Jerome, called The God Who Speaks, that this will continue. And the emphasis there will be very much on looking towards the 70th anniversary of De Verbum, the dogmatic constitution on divine revelation that was published at the end of the Second Vatican Council. And the God Who Speaks project, which we are partnered with by the Bible Society, is an important act of placing the Word of God centrally, not only in the liturgical life of the Church, but in our personal prayer life, because it is there that we have that individual encounter with the Lord. And our understanding of the Scriptures leads us to a deeper understanding of Christ, because it was St. Jerome himself who said that an ignorance of the Scriptures is an ignorance of Christ himself. And tying in with the work of charitable action that was undertaken by the church throughout the pandemic. Raymond Friel, who is the new chief executive officer of Caritas Social Action Network, one of the agencies of the bishops, spoke to the bishops about the new vision and mission that he hopes that CSAN will undertake over the next few years, focusing on three particular areas, domestic poverty, the elderly and the isolated, and immigration and refugees and how CSAN wishes to create an advocacy alliance across its network, working in partnership with the bishops to address those issues.